At tier 1, Blood Warden blocks exit gates for 30 seconds. At tier 2, Blood Warden blocks exit gates for 40 seconds. So at tier 3, it should be 50 seconds, but instead it is 60. Predator is currently the only perk in the game that still has slightly, moderately and considerably in the description of the perk. According to the game manual, incapacitated prevents survivors to interact with others and also prevents repairing and sabotaging generators. You cannot sabotage any generator unless they mean blast mine and repairs alliance, but that is so weird to include here because they don't mention hooks. The clown lacks the flipping animation for his shave blade despite having one for the rest of his default cosmetics. Finishing a match with the Fire Moon Oni skin will have weird black spikes that are part of his Blood Fury in the endgame lobby. The classic Ghostface masks is at that discount and only cost 200 Auric cells, proving that behavior can actually reduce the cost of items if they are way too similar to another one. And talking about classic Ghostface, did you know that when this cosmetic was released, there was a bug where the cape completely glitched with knife, taking a quarter of the screen. And another thing that they fixed was one of Deathslinger's weapons having a literal pressure valve blocking the iron sights of the weapon. But what they haven't fixed yet is the annoying arrow in first person when you use the Demon's End Oni skin. I honestly don't understand how these things even ended up in the live version of the game. Literal pay to lose cosmetics. Legion has hoodie strings in their default skin that completely disappear in their prestigious and the colors of their default cosmetics for some reason. Deathslinger's harpoon, on closer inspection, is actually misaligned, and all the cosmetics except for the default one clip a little bit through the top of the barrel of the rifle. For some reason, in the escaped patient skin, Michael Myers' skin tone is way more white than the skin on his neck. And this is extremely noticeable with the cut on his top chest since you can see two different skin tones very close together. And talking about Myers, have you noticed how massive his hands are actually compared to the rest of the body? And the knife and screwdriver especially is extremely huge when compared to survivors. But talking about massive hands, have you ever noticed how big the Legion's female hands are? To all Susie Sims, don't you think these hands look disgusting? On one of Legion's weapon description, Susie's name is wrongly written as Susie with a Z. And also on Julie's mixtape, her name in the mixtape is actually Jules. Why did Behavior never make weapon recolors for the Wicked Brewer on common sets? There's absolutely no reason why they are missing from it. Also, why are Prestige outfits not sets so we can equip them more easily instead of going piece by piece? And talking about Prestigious, Unless you are a completionist, or you want the prestige outfits, there is absolutely no benefit to prestigion at all. The increase in rarity is so meaningless that it is practically non-existent, and also, some killer's best add-ons are actually common, like Twin, Ghostface and Legion, so making them rarer is a downside. Why are some cosmetic rarities different despite being the exact same cosmetics but just recolors? For example, in the current Rift, we have a nurse outfit that is rare but it is a recolor of a very rare outfit in the store. Same with this plague recolor in the store. Why is it a green rarity if wall recolors have been uncommon? Why I gotta pay $10 to buy a recolored cosmetic of the plague when I can buy a different cosmetic that actually has model changes instead? And why is Joey's default cosmetic a very rare one when his Christmas sweater skin is considered rare despite being a literal recolor of the very rare default Joey skin? Am I paying less for the backpack and the pointy hoodie? Actually, I just discovered why you're paying extra for his default skin. Apparently, Joey has a bigger weapon inside his pants on the default one. And just like that, I discovered that Susie has some weird issue when you change between her sophomore skin and the Christmas sweater if you look at the boots and knees. Why does Cheryl not come with some jeans to wear with her crop tops? She never had the tops with the skirt in Silent Hill 2. Instead, she had jeans. The only way to get jeans is to glitch her sets, and why are they sets to begin with? The Cheryl cosmetics we have in the game are actually less game accurate than the glitched ones. And talking about sets, why can't we use any weapon we want with the killer sets? There would be zero clipping issues with Sadako's ultra rare skin or tricksters. Why are we paying extra for a basic weapon that has nothing special? Survivors have a consistency problem in their description. At first, it was always a description of the survivor, 
But then with Cheryl, it was her name. Then with Felix, Elodie and Junjin, they went back to the original descriptions. And with their resident evil cast and the rest, they decided to go with their names instead. Also, the clown's antidote bottle is completely missing in his killer description. The last general perks we ever got was the Stranger Things one, and those were not intended to be general perks. The last real perk we got that was general was Thrill of the Hunt, way back when Hack was released. So why are they making starter perks like Corrective Action, Rookie Spirit and Visionary on paid DLC survivor characters instead of making them general perks and instead make an actual useful perk for the ones we pay for? A lot of charms are actually mirrored on the back, but some of them are not. Why is there no consistency? Also, with the latest rift, they added common charms that change the model of the charm, instead of being coins and flat stuff. Why are they common and not uncommon rarity, like the rest of the charms that change the 3D model of the item? And talking about charms, why can't we use any charm we want on any character? Why do they have to make some exclusive charms to one row? I want to use the Legion mural on Frank, or the tape recorder on Amanda. The tape recorder is so small in game as a survivor that it's just a wasted spot. The twins weapon design is so pointless, its only purpose is to look cool. How does the random nail in the middle of the scythe help in any way with the hit? It just looks awkward. Also, I love when a survivor is already dead and in the process of sacrificing, but I still cannot return back to Charlotte when playing twins until the survivor completely disappears. High octane gameplay right here. Why can survivors use the Blight Serum on their midkits without any limitations, but killers can only use their equivalent add-on exclusively during Halloween? I love how Clown, Hillbilly, Artist and Blight get spring cosmetics. I wish there was a bunny killer that could have at least one cosmetic referencing spring. There is a typo on the Adept Plague achievement that says that you have to win with the plague only using their three unique perks. Maybe she changed her pronouns after coming to the fog, I don't know. Also, the Adept descriptions are inconsistent since the Dead Singer's Adept achievement. According to Nia's lore, she was dared to tag the Crotus Print Asylum. However, if you look around the map, you will never see the tag of Nia anywhere, which I think is a missed opportunity to make some cool lore connection. If you combine the Fuming mixtape and Frank's mixtape, you know, the ones that they use to showcase how the chase music changes, they actually have no synergy at all. This is because Fuming mixtape prevents you from breaking generators, which is one of the biggest parts of Frank's mixtape's benefit. The survivor's exclusive shroud, the Shroud of Binding, actually helps the killers a lot, since a killer wants every survivor to spawn together. But then, the Shroud of Separation, which is exclusive to killers, actually hurts killers, because that would make survivors do more gens. I never expected my last vid to get so much support. This vid wouldn't have been possible without your amazing comments, so thank you so much for them, and I hope you enjoyed this vid as much as the first one. If you do, make sure to check out the rest of my channel. I have some really good content that I know you will enjoy. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.